Welcome to the online lecturing series Ask Expert Part 3 Pandemic COVID-19 Challenge and Future of the New Technologies organized by Research Synergy Foundation, Research Synergy Institute in collaboration with Scientific Innovation Research Group, SIRG Egypt. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for your participation in this webinar session, online lecturing session. Thank you very much for Prof. Ahmed Elengar from Beniswef University and SIRG Egypt. Thank you very much for your attending as the expert here today, Prof. And thank, thank you, you very so much. Thank you very much for Mr. Ersan Musli will be the moderator of uh, today today online lecturing series. And thank you and welcome to Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi as the founder and chairman Research Synergy Foundation. And thank you and welcome to Ms. Santi Ramawati as founder and also director of Operation and Global Network from Research Synergy Foundation. And please introduce myself. My name is Ani Wahyu Rahmawati and uh, I will be the uh, master ceremony today um, for the online lecturing series as expert part three, pandemic COVID-19 challenge and future of new technologies. Again, thank you very much for all the participants. We are very grateful uh, to having you here in our um, online lecturing series uh, as expert part three. Next slide. Before we going to the uh, main session, I would like to introduce our moderator today, um, Mr. Ersan Musli from the Material Chemistry Department, Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology, Kanazawa University, Japan. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Ersan Musli. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to share the short profile consists of educational background, research interest, and also uh, his career. Uh, Mr. Ersan Musli is graduated from the Chemistry Department, Indonesia University of Education with the uh, research title, Complex Compound and Extraction, and continue to uh, School of Material Science and Engineering, Yongnam University, South Korea, and uh, from 2019 until present, uh, see, he is a study in Material Chemistry Department, Kanazawa University, Japan. His research interest is chemistry, metallurgy, nano and thin films, photovoltaics, sorry if I'm um, a uh, mistake uh, to uh, pronounce, and renewable energy. And now, Currently, Mr. Ersan Musli is a lecturer in Trisakti University uh, Indonesia, one of the big university in Indonesia. So please welcome for Mr. Ersan Musli as the moderator today. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. Maybe for the next, next uh, uh, lecture, I will guide as moderator, but First, before we start the lecture, I will uh, tell the uh, online lecture learn online lecture contract. First, this a uh, lecture will delivered by Professor Ahmed Elgar, associate professor from Beniswef University in Egypt. And then, all of these materials in this webinar will be emailed to all participants, if necessary. And also, uh, please, all participants are required to mute uh, your uh, audio so it will not distract. And the host has every right to mute and any participant's audio and remove who are deemed destructive without warning. And for Q&A, question and answer or certificate and others uh, can only be asked by via Zoom chat room. So if you have a question, any questions, you can chat at a Zoom chat room. And me as moderator will manage as time available. And also for certificate will be provided 
after decision for every participant. Okay, next. Okay, this is our a uh, uh, guideline. First, a uh, we have already done the welcoming online lecturing session and learning contract, and we maybe we do a e group photo before we start the lecture, and then a uh, maybe uh, we have some introduction. Uh, the RSF global research ecosystem and then we uh, go to uh, online lecture series and then after that uh, we have a discussion okay maybe this all uh, our guidelines and then next okay I will uh, introduce to you all the about the speaker uh, our speaker is Associate Professor Ahmed Lingar, Elgar, Assistant Professor in Computer Science, Benin Swef University, Faculty of Computers and Artificial Intelligence in Egypt. Uh, he also founder and head of Scientific Innovation Research Group, or we already known as SIRG. And he also director of technology Technology, technological and Informatics Studies Centers, and also Director of the University Portal, Deputy Director of the International Ranking Office, Benis Swift University, Managing Director, Editor of Journal of Cybersecurity and Information Management, and Member of Egyptian Mathematical Science, and Member of International Rough Science Society. Uh, Dr. Elgar also works in many research, uh, include a IoT, Internet of Things, Network Security, Intuition Detection, Machine Learning, Data Mining, Artificial Intelligence, Big Data, and Authentication, Cryptology, and so, so many uh, topics. Dr. Dr. Uh, Elgar is an editor and reviewer at, uh, of many international journals around the world. And he also have a great many activities in community and environment service, including uh, organizing about 250 international conference, well, that's a lot, and workshops housed by a large number of universities in almost all governance of Egypt and all around the world. Next. Okay, uh, maybe now we are going to introduction of RSF Global Research Ecosystem by uh, Ms. Santi Rahmawati. Okay, please. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Resan, for the uh, introductions and also welcoming to all of us, uh, to the participants uh, that already joined our online lecturing sessions. So once again, welcome, welcome to the webinar and hopefully that all of us can gain benefit and also insight and also knowledge uh, respected to the topic that will be delivered by the Professor Elmer. Okay, before we start to the main um, uh, the main session, which is the lecturing. So I would like to have a brief introductions about the global research ecosystems. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, actually, maybe some of you already well known about the Research Synergy Foundations, but maybe uh, there are new participants that this is the first time in joining our events. So in every of our event, we usually uh, we usually explain about the research uh, synergy foundations, specifically in the global research ecosystem itself, because we believe that by having these research ecosystems to your uh, network, to your individual or your institution, it will help boost your academic career. Okay, so actually what is the research synergy foundation itself? The Research Synergy Foundation is a digital social enterprise platform. So we are the platforms that focuses on developing research ecosystem towards outstanding global scholars. Those, our members are more, uh, coming from more than 72 countries. And now we build a collaborative networks among researchers, lecturers, scholars, and practitioners 
globally for the realization of the knowledge accelerations. And why research synergy is um, established or why research synergy is exist? Actually, because we really do understand that many researchers worldwide may have limited access to opportunities, knowledge sharing medium, and technology. And they may also have limited access to literatures. Therefore, writing and publishing become one of the main issues they need to overcome. They may receive little or no feedbacks on their writings, thus impeding their growth as a global scholars. And publishing in high impact journals sometimes become a huge challenge and experience is often discouraging. So therefore, we, the Research Synergy Foundation or RSF, provides a comprehensive and integrated research ecosystems that will facilitate the process and enable you to contribute more to academics and society. And in the next slide, please. And this is how we work. If in the Research Synergy Foundations, we already built and now we already strengthen the global research ecosystem, which consists of the four support systems. So the four support systems that already exist now is intercorrelated inter with each other because each support system has their own specific roles in terms of the research. First is the scholar vein. The scholar vein is the integrated conference operating systems which covers the pre, during, and post process of the conference. So it also includes the online submission system, the global marketing systems, and of course the publication systems. And through the scholar vein since 2017 until now, we already helped conduct uh, or we, we already conducted more than 100 international conferences in more than 15 countries around the globe. And our member is actually this is the, the numbers, uh, the numbers in 2019. So the number is now is getting increased more. Uh, the member is that more than 2,500 members from more than 72 countries. And again, we also receive more than 1,000 manuscripts that already submitted through the scholar veins. So the scholar vein is already uh, reliable since the 2017, and now is a now the system is uh, a more uh, more comprehensive to each the submission process of each articles. The next one is the Research Synergy Institute. Research Synergy Institute is actually the enhancement and also the learning platforms for the scholars, researchers, and also the, the professionals. So in Research Synergy Institute, actually we have so many programs, including these online uh, lecturing sessions, which also engage with more, uh, which more expert and also trainers around the globe. So in Research Synergy Foundation, because we believe that there are gaps actually between the author capacity and also the uh, journal requirement or the editor requirement, because we already well known about uh, the requirement of the journals. So those we made some uh, enhancement program regarding those uh, scientific skill uh, or upgrading the scientific uh, skills. And then now currently actually we have more than uh, 30 universities that already partner with the RSI itself in conducting more than uh, 55 to 60 workshops, not only in Indonesia, but there's also in the Philippines also and some of uh, other countries also. And then the next one is the RSF Press. In the RSF Press is the Integrated International Journal System for Better Indexations. So in RSF Press is we have the university or the institution to have their own journals, to have their own journals and managing their journal from the scratch towards uh, the, the, the target is that the journal is to be submitted to Scopus in the next two years. And right now we have currently actually we already have nine, nine upcoming journal collaborations with more than more than more than eight, yeah, more than eight universities, uh, not only in Indonesia, but also they are also in other countries. And then in RSF Press also, we uh, as the main um, main network of the Teller L, uh, and Francis as the distributor, also we have access to more than a thousand scopus of web of science indexed international journals by Teller and Francis. And then in the reviewer track, so and the reviewer track is also important because if we talk about the research, 
we talk about the scientific ethics that embed in the every process. And a reviewer track is the hub for worldwide reviewers, where this uh, reviewer track also being a gatekeepers because this is to emphasize and to make sure that the, the article that submit, submitted to every scientific forum that RSF has, whether it is through the conferences or the coaching or the workshops. So it's, 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 it's goes to the, it goes to the ethical process. And then right now in reviewer track, we have more than a thousand reviewers around the globe from various multidisciplines. And then also uh, we already review 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 more than a, a thousand uh, article that come and in reviewer track also it is connected with the scholar vein and also the rsf press in order to maintain the quality of the the paper submission that comes to our events and then in this opportunity also i would like also to invite all of the participants to become to become our reviewers in the reviewer tracks in order to get a more acknowledgement in terms of the scientific and academic fields because there are numerous num uh, numerous benefits that the reviewer can get one of it is of course the the grant the grant of the conference and also the grant of the publication in the rsf press journals and then the other benefit is like being invited as one of our expert or our keynote in our upcoming conferences, of course, with certain criteria. And then also, um, and there are a lot of benefits like uh, involving in our uh, future program uh, or our future collaboration programs. By having these research ecosystems, we believe that uh, each scholars, both individually and also institutionally or university level, it can gain more benefits and it can work the, the research enhancement program more effective and efficiently. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, and this is to uh, summarize that if we talk about the RSF and also the ecosystem in terms of the research, actually how maybe some of you uh, ask how to be a part of the uh, RSF or how to be a global scholar that uh, recognized by many, um, many researchers around the globe. Basically, those three steps is, can be applied to you. The first is by participate in the RSF scientific forums. What, so one of the scientific forums is the international conference because we believe that this conference is uh, creating a tipping point of opportunity in research collaborations mutual promotions and also the synergy itself among the researchers because we can have like a knowledge change and transfer and etc during the conference. And then uh, the second one is of course you need to practice your scientific skills because everybody knows that practice makes perfect. And if we talk about the publications, of course, if you, you, you there should term like a publish or Paris. So in RSF, you can train yourself along with our team to make to make a more mesmerizing uh, manuscript that can make editor interested. And then also you can also uh, submit your papers to the international journals, international conference. Moreover, we can do also collaboration on the book chapters and a research writing collaboration and et cetera. So all these programs can be a media for you and can be a perfect uh, combination for you to forge your academic skills. And then of course the last one, after you already train yourself and then participate, and etc. Of course, you need to perform your contributions because, again, what makes us a good, as a good uh, academician or scientist? What can we give back to the society? So by having uh, those tracks, I mean by having this path, together we can make a more impactful program. Both you as individually or your institution or your association or university, we can make a more impactful program or collaborative program in the future that can minimize the gap and accelerate knowledge among countries. And if you want to know more about the research synergy, you can just click uh, our official website, which is in the research synergy.org. Also uh, in the menu, you can also find our uh, form that is uh, like a join us. You can join as the researcher, you can join as the reviewer, you can join as the, in order to build the partnership uh, or, or have a collaboration program in the future. So you can just simply click the resource synergy.org. And the last, the last slide, please. Yeah, and this is 
Next slide, please. Yeah, and this is our upcoming events. Uh, in the website also, you can find those more new and the upcoming events. So not only the conferences, actually, we also have another conference. Uh, we also have another events like the Research Academy, which will be conducted for, uh, in uh, next month in August. It is like a comprehensive program that consists of the research curriculums, but delivered by the seven experts that already well known globally because of their track and you can learn from their best practice and you can start um, uh, you can start in in practicing it so you can just go to our website and then click upcoming event and in in this uh, international conference you can also join as an attendee we also always open for a uh, attendee for each our conferences. So the nearest one is will be on August 25th. So we will make announcement, usually one, one until two weeks before the events, we will open for the free registration for, for attendee. So you can join as attendee and you can involve in the uh, conference and you can give feedback and you can ask and you can do more interactions with the, with the speakers, with the presenters, and you can also do more networking and collaborations in the futures. Okay, I think uh, regarding the global research ecosystem is already um, being mentioned. So hopefully in this opportunity, I would like also to invite all of you again to become part of our, um, to become part of our members that can gain a more benefit, specifically in terms of the research and also in the academic field, okay? Uh, thank you so much and hopefully these sessions also will will make your day more productive okay back to the moderator thank you okay thank you very much for mrs santi for uh, the explanation it's very interesting okay uh next yeah maybe we are the group going... photo maybe uh, oh yeah before before we start before thank you for <laughs> okay before we start the a uh, lecture maybe we have a group photo yeah maybe uh, all the participants can um turn on, turn on the video uh so we can see each other and we can see the uh, lovely face <laughs> Okay, um, here are two windows that um, appear in the Zoom. Okay, now uh, I, will, um, uh, I will take the photo for the uh, Zoom, for the room one. So please welcome to all participants to turn on the video. Okay, uh, I will count. One, two, three, and then take the picture. So please give your best smile. One, two, three. Okay. The next in the uh, window two or room two, I will counting uh, until three and take the picture. So please give your best smile. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, please uh, welcome back to moderator. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, now uh, we start the lecture. Uh, in this section, you will have a lecture section from Professor uh, Ahmed Elgar about the challenges and future of new technologies. Um, it's, the session will last for 45 minutes, and after this session, we have a question and answer if uh, there's enough time. But if you have a question, please write down at the uh, chat room. Okay, to Professor Elner, uh, it's your turn. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, you can start, Professor. Okay, uh, can you give me the, uh, the stage that I can share my presentation? It's, 
this is the host with me now okay maybe okay wait. good very nice. yes yes now with me So uh, now you can see my presentation. It's okay now. Yeah, yeah, we can okay. see your presentation. And okay, it's clear. Okay. okay. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, or good e good evening there, or good afternoon, whatever the place you are there. So uh, I talk about uh, my uh, my country. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to be with all of you. Uh, now, so first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Uh, Henry, Dr. Aini, Dr. Santi to invite me to be part of this online lecturing series, Ask the Expert, uh, part three organized by Research uh, Synergy Foundation uh, and Research in Synergy and, and Institute in collaboration with the Scientific Innovation Research Group in Egypt. Uh, second of all, I'd like to ask all of you to take care of yourself and be safe from the COVID-19 uh, during this pandemic period of time. And we need to part to, to ask, to pray, to ask Allah to remove this virus from all around the world. Uh, thirdly, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I know you introduced uh, the Dr. Hendry uh, uh, and uh, everyone uh, introduced myself, but let me uh, introduce myself once more. So uh, my name is Dr. Ahmed al Nagar. I'm assistant professor of computer science, faculty of computers and artificial intelligence, Bani Suif University, Egypt. I'm a founder and chairman of scientific innovation research group. I'm a director of technological uh, and informatics studies center, uh, Bani Suif University. I'm also the director uh, of Bani Suif University electronic portal. I'm also a co-director of International Ranking Office, Bani Suif University. I'm also, I'm a triple E member of Bani Suif section. I'm a managing editor of a journal of uh, cybersecurity and uh, information management. I'm a seat editor of the International Journal of Informa Informatics, Media, and the Communication Technology uh, in Bani Suif University. Uh, let us start my uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, uh, Prof. Elmer, uh, sorry to interrupt. Maybe you can share the slide. Yeah, slideshow. Okay. <laughs> now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's clear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me introduce. Uh, to let start my presentation, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, talk about the pandemic COVID nineteen challenges and the future of new technologies. Uh, my presentation is divided into two parts, as you can see in the, my outline. So the part one, I will introduce my university, Ben Suif University, and then I will uh, to go to the uh, part two. So we'll talk about the pandemic COVID-19 uh, challenges and the future uh, of new technologies. So I will give some background about this pandemic uh, disease so uh, after that, I will go to the, introduce some uh, technological it will use to, uh, to avoid this disease. So uh, like artificial intelligence, uh, blockchain, and alternative things, maybe I will give some uh, conclusion. Uh, let us start with the uh, part one to introduce my university, Venice Suif University. So this is my university. Uh, so where we are, so uh, the localization of my, uh, of my university, as you can see, this is the map and the, uh, if you visit, come to visit Egypt, so you will uh, go to the, ask about the Venice Wave uh, city, this is in my heart, uh, after that you go to the, uh, this city, so you can go to find or ask about the, my university. So we will be uh, happy if you visit my university. Uh, so welcome if you want to visit my, uh, my university. Uh, 
so let me talk about the Ben Suave University and give some history. So uh, Ben Suave University, as you know, it's a part from the Cairo University. So Cairo University established its branch in Ben Suave City in 1981. Uh, then uh, the Ben Suave University was established as a standalone uh, based on the presidential creeds in 2005 and uh, resigned from prestigio of the Cairo University. Uh, so the president of Ben Suave University is uh, Prof. Dr. Mansour Hassan. He's a president of Ben Suave University. He's from a Faculty of Medicine, Ben Suave University. Uh, my university includes more than 33 of faculties like uh, faculty of computers and artificial intelligence it's my new, my faculty also faculty of commerce faculty of law faculty of arts science education medicine nursing engineering physical education and so on so we have more uh, more faculties and it's uh, it's only there in my university i can see that so uh, let me talk about the students and the facilities so ben Suave university include about 62,000 undergraduate and postgraduate students who are enrolled into 75 undergraduate program and 336 postgraduate program in uh, 87 diploma, 180 master and 131 PhD. In addition, Ben Suave University has valuable and promise, a promising component in terms of the material resources of uh, structures, building and landing, which amount to uh, a total area, area of almost 633 Arabs. So if you want to, more, uh, to know more about the, my university, so you can visit this link or you can contact with me. Uh, now let us move to the second part of my presentation is uh, talk about the uh, pandemic COVID-19 challenges and the future of the new technologies. But let me first give you some definition. It's more important because we need to differentiate between the outbreak, epidemic, and the pandemic. So we can say, when we want to say uh, outbreak, so we talk about the small disease, but unusual. So by tracking diseases over time and the geography, specialists learn to predict how many the cases of the illness should normally happen uh, within a defined period of time, place, and the population. But when we talk about epidemic, so it's bigger and spreading diseases. So an epidemic is an outbreak over large geographic area. But now we talk about the pandemic. So this is international diseases and out control. International diseases and out control. So in the most classical sense, once the epidemic spread to multiple countries or regions of the world, it is be considered as a pandemic. So now really, I want to say we are in pandemic period of time. Uh, so uh, let me say something before I start. So this talk is not like only listed the some uh, technologies which can be used to, the, to avoid this pandemic COVID-19 but it also be considered as an open research area to solve this problem. So please give me your attention. So maybe you can find your uh, interesting uh, points so we can work on. So uh, now let me give you some background about the pandemic COVID-19 and what technology will do. So as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic spreads, technological applications are multiplying in the attempt to control the situation, treat patients in the effective way, and facilitate the efforts of overworked healthcare workers while developing a new effective vaccine. So what we need to know is how different technological domains are helping to fight against this pandemic disease by means of innovative applications. Also, we will highlight on the domain in the main legal of a regulatory challenge, but also we key we uh, also uh, on the key ethical dilemmas that various emergencies context that uh, as uh, current one. In addition. 
scan of the technological uh, horizon of the context of COVID-19 indicate that technology itself can't replace or make up for other public policy measures, but it does have an increasingly critical role to play emergency response. So let me start to talk about some new technologies and how to control the situation. So the first technology we can talk about is artificial intelligence. The international community, community is currently focused in 2020 novel coronavirus is called COVID-19, as we know. First in, uh, identified in China, as it spreads rising fears of the worldwide lockdown, international rising, the scientists have been using artificial intelligence to track the pandemic in real time. So as to be able to predict where the virus might appear next and develop an effective response. You, you can imagine that warnings about the novel COVID uh, coronavirus spreading by China were raised by AI system before official information of, uh, about the epidemic was released by international organizations. A health monitoring startup correctly predict, predict, uh, predicted the spread of COVID-19 using natural language processing and, and machine learning and data mining and so on. But the important question is, how can AI technology be used to manage this type for global health emergency without undermining the protection of fundamental values and the human rights? To answer, to answer this question, we let me talk about the potential impact and development of AI. In the case of COVID-19, AI has been used mainly to help detect whether people have novel coronavirus through detection of virus or visual uh, sign of COVID-19 on uh, imaging from computerized uh, tomography lung scan to monitor in real time. This is the main target. Change the embodied of temperature through the use of wearable sensors and to provide an open source platform, data platform to track the spreading of diseases. Also AI can process vast amount of unstructured text data to predict uh, the number of potential new cases by area and which type of population will be most at risk. This is an important uh, aim of AI. In addition, AI applications can deliver medical supplies by drones these infected patients, uh, rooms and scan uh, approved drug databases for the medical that might also work against COVID-19. AI technology have been utilized to come up with the new molecules that could serve as potential medication or even accelerate the time taken to predict the virus RNA secondary structure. Moreover, certain AI application can also detect fake news. This is very also important application using AI to avoid the COVID-19 and the, the uh, detected this, what, that, that is a defective fake news is about the diseases, about applying machine learning techniques for mining social media. Tracking down words that are uh, essential for uh, and alarming and identifying which online source are deemed authoritative for fighting what has been called info, infodemic. One more AI application, such as the use of facial recognition, very important to track people not wearing masks on public or AI based fever detection system, as well as the processing of data collection on digital platform and mobile network to track people's movements. But we need to consider what about anticipatory policy making. This is very also important to know it. As a governance system, the WHO has limited enforcement tools and its monitoring system is fully dependent on a state's 
willing to meet their God field reporting requirements. However, AI technology have the potential to, to challenge the state monopoly, monopoly information control the WHO rights to receive the report from the non-state resources, particularly if when, if and when who those reports uh, um, contra contradictory report provided by the state. Now, let us talk about the second technique. It will be used in the, to avoid the coronavirus or help to detect the coronavirus uh, uh, for, uh, in this period of time. So it's called the blockchain. So uh, blockchain, as we know, COVID-19 is highly infectious nature, which means that there is pressing need to find the appropriate solution from speeding up the detection of virus carriers and halting the spreading of the virus, uh, virus to develop a vaccine. Blockchain technology has recently emerged as a key technology in critical domain of pandemic management. So blockchain application could provide a robust, transparent and cheap means of facilitate effective decision making. And as a result, could lead to faster response during emergencies of the kind uh, of this kind of the uh, uh, disease. In the context of this pandemic, blockchain has the potential of this uh, potential to become an integral part of the global response to coronavirus. That's by tracking the, the spread of disease, managing these insurance payments, maintaining the sustainability of uh, uh, media uh, medical. Uh, supply chain, and finally, the donation tracking the pathway. The blockchain application could uh, monitor diseases over time by creating ledgers that are both secure and update hundreds of time per day. Additionally, using blockchain can improve diagnostic accuracy and treatment effectiveness streamline the rapid isolation of clusters uh, of cases and track drug supply chain and the medical supplies manage medical data and also identify disease uh, symptoms patterns. So in order, in order for application of uh, blockchain to bring added value to public health emergency context of comparing with the uh, traditional motric mechanism. So it should be, so uh, it, it should be make expensive use of its encryption characteristics combined with the decentralized uh, peer to peer uh, uh, engagement as to improve the security, regulatory uh, complaints, the durability, selective privacy, and timing. But what is the potential and the impact of developing a blockchain? By using encrypted data and records to track uh, transactions, several blockchain technologies have been launched to solve the challenge posed by the COVID-19 crisis and to bring an innovative solution to a problem associated with the major disruption. First, in the area of the uh, donation tracking, blockchain allows donors to oversee where their funds and needs receive the notification. When the, the donation has been received, then track donation made uh, for treatment of people infected with the COVID-19. As well as, blockchain can offer a platform based to enable users to trace a demand and supply chain of medical supplies. Also, given a shortage of facial masks and to rise it, uh, to rise to challenge associated with the management, allocation and donation of relief supply. Blockchain also can manage health records securely, ensuring interoperability without compromising security and patient privacy. Another blockchain-based application helps 
government agencies keep track of the patients and suspicious suspected in new cases also allows doctors to analyze patient symptoms and emergency diagnostic data of real uh, of real time in real hour in real time and integrating a patient medical history data but what you, what we need to know is or consider about the anticipatory policy making so in an interconnected world facing serious interoperability challenge blockchain technology could contribute to the robust pandemic alarm uh, alert system however uh, as a blockchain is still it's in early stages of the development several legal questions may have yet to be answered which are is which are who should be in charge of the data? Who should be able to access it? Who monitors this blockchain? How should patients and the public health organization be identified in the database? And where are ser servers located? And what types of digital and physical controls exist? So, as sensitive data of medical nature of, uh, or location are urgently needed by governments to track the spread and the transmission of diseases as well as by biotechnology companies to train their algorithms, privacy restrictions may soon have to be loaded. So we have a very important question. Will that affect the blockchain application as well? This is uh, uh, this equation need to be solved. Uh, let us move to the uh, third uh, technology we can use it to avoid uh, this pandemic, this Corona COVID-19 pandemic is uh, Internet of Things. So Internet of Things based healthcare system is useful for proper monitoring COVID-19 patients by employing interconnected networks. This technology helps to uh, increase patient satisfaction and reduces readmission rate in hospitals. So IoT is helpful for infected patients of COVID-19. To identify symptoms and to provide better treatment readily. It's also useful for patient, physicians, surgeon and the hospital management system as well. In seed forward wars, the Internet of Things is a system of interconnected devices complied with all network elements such as hardware, software, connectivity of network and any other required electronic. It means that ultimately makes them responsive by supporting in data collection. Now, let me give some background about IoT vision and architecture. So IoT is becoming one of the hottest research topics nowadays. IoT application will affect many aspects of people's lives, bringing about many convenience. There are three main visions of IoT based on things, internet, and semantic perspectives. So when we talk about things vision, this vision provides a perspective, perspective that all real physical objects can have the sensors attached to get real-time information from them. This vision provides the base for integration of all things to collaborate together. But when we talk about the internet vision, this vision provides perspective that all devices can be connected through internet and can be described as smart objects. This can accomplish by using unique IP for each connected object. Now let me talk about the semantic vision. This vision provides a perspective that all data collected for carries 
uh, uh, series need to be analyzed for meanings, for meaningful interpretation. This vision provides the base for semantic integration through the use of semantic middleware. Now let me talk about the IoT architecture. So to implement to, uh, to implement IoT requires an open architecture based several layers. So IoT architecture can be primarily divided into three layers almost, maybe four, maybe five, according to what the researchers uh, talk about. So the first one, but I'm talking about the almost one, uh, the uh, perception layer, it's such as like uh, RFID and GPS and so on, network layer, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, application layers such as Co-app and, and MQTT. All these layers have more protocols and more uh, 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 things to talk about. It's very important. The open research area, you can talk about it. But what is the potential impact and development of IoT? By developing the proposed IoT tactic, in the COVID-19 pandemic, the effective tracing of the patients as well as the suspicious cases can be completely assured. But what is the significant application of IoT for COVID-19 pandemic? So IoT uses a large number of interconnected devices to create smart networks for a proper health management system. It alerts and tracks any type of diseases to improve the safety of the patients. It digitally captures the data and information of the patients without any human interaction. This data is also helpful for appropriate decision-making process. So let me discuss in brief the major applications of IoT for COVID-19 pandemic. So the first one is transparent COVID-19 treatment. In this application, the patients can uh, use the benefits offered without any favors. The second one is wireless healthcare network to identify COVID-19 patients. So various authentic applications can be installed into smartphones, which can make identification procedures smaller and more fruitful. The other one is rapid COVID-19 screening. As the case of rabbit I'm found at the first instance, uh, maybe. So the proper diagnosis will uh, be attempted through smart connected treatment devices. This ultimately makes the overall screening process more superior. The final one is a connected uh, or connect all medical tools and devices through the internet. So during the COVID-19 treatment, IoT connected all medical tools and devices through internet, which convey the real information during the treatment. But we need to consider what about the anticipatory policy making. The primary point of uh, concern while employing internet of things in the present pandemic situation, COVID-19, is about security and the privacy of the dead data received which is unique and imperative from patient's health point of view. The second thing is about the care to take while integrating data network among devices involved and protocol. As you can see here in this figure, show the summarized view of uh, issues and the challenges in implementing IoT for COVID-19 pandemic. So it's very, very important to know this. So you can find really, you can find uh, some research point to work. It's still open. You can work about. So as you can see in the figure, it's IoT COVID-19, several issues and future uh, aspects. So if you go to the left, uh, left branch to talk about the safety, security, and privacy of data. So you can uh, work upon misuse of patients' data, or you can work about cyber crime uh, cases. But if you choose the second uh, branch on the right hand, the challenges in the network integration, so you can work about the process of data aggregation. So it's really still open area you work upon. Uh, finally, uh, I will give some conclusion about my talk. So uh, 
As you know, healthcare organizations are in the urgent need for decision-making technologies to handle this virus and help them to getting proper suggestions in real time to avoid this spread. Also, healthcare de uh, delivery required to sub the support of a new technology like artificial intelligence, blockchain, Internet of Things, and others to fight and look ahead against the new diseases. These technologies help us to increase patient satisfaction and reduce the readmission rate in hospitals. Also, the results driven from these uh, technologies are used for proper screening, analyzing, predicting, or prediction and tracking the current patients and likely future patients. The significant applications are applied to track data of confirmed, recovered, and death cases. So it's very important. Also, we also need to know, also we need to think about uh, the use of these technologies and the justification of, for them because this is not compatible now for this kind of this, of this disease. So we need to also in context to know uh, in context with militarism of, uh, and the political economy in order to fully understand who will benefit and who will suffer. Also, we need to consider the potential of uh, urbanization of some of this uh, technology or how it can be used to re uh, repress and oppress population. And we need to think about what action we can take now to prevent that kind of uh, divestment uh, future that otherwise have wasted us. Uh, Thank you so much for your attention. I hope to uh, give you some uh, open areas where you can work upon. Uh, this is still have time to work and we can collaborate together uh, with my group, Serge group, and also with uh, Serge group. So we can uh, make some uh, maybe patent, maybe uh, uh, papers. Still we have time to work about this uh, kind of diseases using this uh, kind of technology, new technology. So thank you so much. Uh, the moderator has the stage. Okay, thank you so much, Professor, for your presentation. It was so nice, so interesting, and such a good presentation. Okay, maybe uh, now we are going to a question and answer section yeah, yeah but for that maybe can operator uh, show the questions okay okay there are, there are several questions maybe this is the first one okay this is the first one, okay professor. okay what a new application have been created Specifically to relieve the symptoms of pandemic COVID-19. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, now, as you know, this is uh, this kind of coronavirus is not used before, or it's not known before as usual. So, uh, so there is some applications uh, developed to know to uh, to detect uh, this kind of uh, symptoms. Um, you know what, we can, uh, you can think like uh, uh, new technology, like uh, nanotechnology, it's a very important uh, technology. So you can detect, detect this uh, kind of coronavirus. So you can use uh, maybe artificial intelligence or nanotechnology, but the all researchers now struggle to find some kind of applications and or uh, some kind of algorithms because this algorithm of uh, uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence not need to to identify to uh, to justification to need to, uh, some justification to adapt to this kind of this coronavirus so you can search about the some algorithms um, in machine learning and artificial intelligence and uh, uh, also uh, connected with nanotechnology so but now it's not an 
exact application I can tell you about. So it's like a struggle from uh, researchers around the world. That's all. Okay, maybe that was the first one. Okay. So let's continue for the second one. Okay, this okay. one is the second one. Okay, so what uh, with the current situation during the pandemic, mm -hmm. what is the best practice that's been implemented by your institution? Uh, purely online class or uh, band learning or other option, it is implemented in all uh, faculties and all major equally or part of uh, Yes, in this kind of situation, um, Really, uh, my university and uh, let me talk about the uh, my uh, my country. They really uh, try to control this bad uh, uh, situation, and the, the using we are uh, using and the, uh, they are ordered uh, all universities and some kind of uh, uh, schools to using online uh, classes because we need to make the uh, distance between the students because uh, it's very important to do that. So uh, when we talk about my university, the, uh, the president of the university, Dr. Mansour Hassan, he's really caring about this kind of uh, disease because uh, maybe because his background, uh, his, uh, because he's a uh, uh, graduate from the medicine uh, faculty. So he know exactly what is the series uh, about this coronavirus. So, uh, we uh, really uh, concern about the students and we uh, take, uh, make some uh, lectures um, uh, uh, in, on online classes. And uh, we now thinking about to make the, uh, uh, the uh, platform to, uh, to make exam examination for the students. Uh, because this is a very important and also uh, this is ordered from the ministers of higher education here in Egypt. So, uh, as uh, as usual in every country, using the platforms of for the class uh, class uh, rooms, uh, online classrooms. Uh, but we really also here uh, uh, make some something like that. That's all. Okay, thank you, professor. Oh, there is another one. Here, maybe, yeah. Uh, around the world, right. some countries have already implemented mobile applications that are used to locate people, uh, monitor their state of health, and so on. How can the right to privacy and the personal health data uh, be protected in fight against the coronavirus epidemic? Uh, epidemic? Uh, so. Uh, as we uh, as we uh, differentiate between the uh, uh, outbreak and the epidemic and the uh, pandemic, so now we are really in pandemic period of time. So we uh, uh, we ask a lot to remove this uh, uh, virus. Uh, so uh, uh, back to your uh, question. So uh, yes, and, and I'm talking about my uh, my research group. We. Uh, made some uh, applications and mobile applications to detect a people uh, who's wearing uh, the, uh, uh, the the mask or uh, don't don't take the percussions for this uh, this pandemic uh, so we uh, we here in Egypt uh, working about this uh, upon this uh, this kind of applications and this is also come from the president of the uh, of my country uh, he uh, really funded um, uh, money more money about this and he he make a, a, a competition who can give us applic applications to monitor and maybe to uh, to to uh, uh, to avoid this kind of this virus. Uh, so we need to work upon this uh, kind of uh, applications. So uh, I'm, I welcome uh, if anyone wants to, to, uh, uh, to collaborate with us, with my university or with my group. So welcome uh, for this uh, collaborations. Okay, maybe that's all for this questions. Any Okay, there's another one, Professor. 
This is from Maria Savitri. Okay, with the uncertainty of when is the pandemic will be ended, education okay. field are using technology. Okay, okay. with the uncertainty of, of when is pandemic uh, will be ended, uh, education field are using technology to change their in class activity. Uh, as we know, many platform offer uh, nowadays to help schools and the universities. My question is, uh, are these platform um, technology safe? And what about students who don't have technology in their places? Uh, how um, they can get the knowledge that uh, share from, from their school? Oh, very, very good question. Uh, yes, yes, we, we really, uh, don't have time to know uh, the when this pandemic ended. So we need to thinking more about the uh, uh, how the how the education will uh, will go. So and in my university we put a competition to make this uh, platform because as you know the some of uh, platforms technology is not safe. Yes. Yes, so the important uh, uh, question is how to, to assure the uh, privacy and security for all information about the uh, universities and, uh, yeah, and the, the students and the other things. So I think, in my opinion, we need to, uh, every university need to create a platform, own platform. I think this is very important to uh, make some, uh, some uh, the, the, the information for the university and the, the, uh, the students to be in safe. Uh, and the, uh, uh, about your, uh, to, uh, about your uh, questions, so uh, you said the students who don't have technology in their place. No, I think this is not, um, this is not uh, suitable now because now we are in 2020 century. So we need to know everything about technology. Maybe you don't have uh, uh, more knowledge about the te these technologies, but at least you know what is in the stage now. So we don't ask them to uh, develop, but we need to know how to use it. So I think this is not excuse for the student to know uh, or uh, have or not because uh, uh, every country now, I think, they develop uh, 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 their internet connection, they, they develop uh, uh, material to how to use the uh, applications. So, so I think, I think uh, the students need to, uh, we, we need as a professor to push the student uh, to use this kind of uh, technologies. Um, and uh, how they can get the knowledge that share from the school. So as, you, as I said before, the, uh, it's in my opinion. So every school, every university need to make a platform, own platform to use it. And after that, we can manage. But, but I think this is need to put under, the, uh, under control from maybe organizations. To, so we need like, uh, 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 using this, I think we can use the blockchain uh, at this at this time because because this blockchain technology give us the uh, uh, some kind of security. So I think we need to use this blockchain technology, and the universities and school need to create uh, own platform to use it in their uh, in their education. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's the answer. Okay. Let's go to the next questions. Okay, so what can you say about the main mm. government policy on how to handle medical mm, pandemic such as COVID-19 attached to this main policy? Will be policies about the use of funds and innovations? Uh, okay, so I think government need, uh, as here in Egypt, they give all permissions for the uh, for universities because universities have uh, are professors. They are uh, specialists on some kind of the uh, medicine and some kinds of the uh, of technology. So I think we need to make the 
the collaboration between the medical uh, medical uh, uh, members and the technological members. So we can find uh, a solution to solve this kind of uh, disease. So if the government and and uh, this is all of them all all of them under the uh, vision of the government. So uh, uh, so we can give this. Uh, uh, this uh, order for the university and uh, ask for professors for technology and the medicine to find uh, uh, to make this cooperation. I think I think uh, and the, and the, for in my in my in my country really the president he uh, concerned about this kind of uh, uh, of policies because he he found a lot of money to get the solutions under the policies, under the control of the government. But still back to blockchain. Blockchain is very important technology. We can use it. So government now, we, we are moving to use the govern, the, uh, this technology in some kind of uh, transactions. And, so I, and also, we can use it in this kind of disease. So uh, we need to find appropriate technology to make a balance between the government policy and how to uh, mm, to find applications uh, to prevent this uh, the people from the, to uh, uh, to infect with, by this kind of uh, disease. Yes. Okay. Maybe that's all for these questions. Oh, okay. Maybe this is the last one, but okay. there are several. Uh, questions professor that uh, appear in these slides uh, maybe I will a uh, uh, read for you this is from Almer Gambora uh, what educational intervention in tourism and hospitality can you suggest in adapting the AI uh. Well, I, I can't see the... Uh, yeah, the it's, please. Uh, yeah, it's not appear in this. Uh, maybe I will, I will uh, send message to you. Wait a moment. Okay, here it is. Here. So this question is for, from Almar Gamboa. Okay. Okay, educational intervention in tourism and hospitality. Can you suggest in adapting the AI? So, that's the question. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Can you? Okay. Uh, uh, suggestion for what? Suggestion so, so some applications or, or yeah. suggestion what? Uh, yeah, some I think, applications. I think yes. So, I think it's, so. it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not like uh, application now. I'm talk about the some kind of technology. So mm -hmm. we, if we mm -hmm. know the technology. We can use it in, in application, maybe web application, maybe uh, in maybe using in the drone drones, maybe using it in the uh, uh, in some kind of applications. I'm talking about the technology. You we need to know as a scientist, as a specialist, what about the technology? Mm. Nanotechnology is very important technology using in this uh, kind of disease. So we need to adapt. And, and they make a justification for this kind of uh, technology. So we can use it after that in any application we can use it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is uh, two more. And the next one is from Farouk Awan. Okay. Okay. He asked about how can we improve our health communication in, in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic by using technology. How what? Uh, I'm sorry, how, how what? How can he said, Improve healthy communication in the hmm. wake of COVID-19 pandemic using technology. Yes. Uh, to improve healthy communication, yes. So it's, it's, uh, it's this is, it's not my, uh, yes, it's not, it's not my mind. I think uh, uh, improve the uh, uh, the communication, but I don't know what exactly you mean. You mean the communication mm -hmm. between peoples or the communication on the uh, 
uh, on the uh, technology, like uh, using uh, IoT, uh, like networking, like uh, uh, this. I, I don't know what what your, your what your means exactly. Uh, Mm. But when, when we talk about the communication, uh, my specialist is the networking. So we need to adapt the protocols used in the network to make the communication easily. And you can use it in everywhere. That's why. So I still need to adapt these protocols because it's not it, this. Uh, uh, let me say something. When we talk about artificial intelligence, artificial need to be adapted. So I think artificial intelligence techniques now is not compatible with artificial with uh, situations come after that. Maybe after one year, two years, three years, four years. No, we need to every time to adapt these kind of algorithms to be suitable for the situations like we are now. So we need to uh, to work more and more for these algorithms to make this adaptation. That's that's all. Yes. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I also don't really understand the question, but I just <laughs> deliver okay. to you. Okay. okay. Uh, the last one, professor. The last okay. question. Maybe this is. I think this is a good question from a Saidu Mansur Adam. Uh, is there any AI device uh, currently? that detects coronavirus within the air? There is struggle. I can't give you exactly what a kind of AI devices. I, I, I can't say that AI, maybe I can say IoT device. I think so. So I, I, uh, we need to adapt the kind of the technology of IoT to use it everywhere. Now, all companies struggle to use this technology to make the innovation to use it in everywhere. And using uh, the combination between IoT and the AI and the, uh, and the technology and the, using all of them in the drones. So it's now a struggle. Like vaccine, we don't have the, any vaccine now. It's, it's, it's easy. So uh, every uh, company now struggle to find the solution a good solution for this kind of uh, pandemic disease. Yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's the last question. That was the last question, Professor. Okay. Okay, for this session. Yeah. Okay, now we are uh, uh, Thank you so much for uh, your uh, listening to me and your patience uh, for all uh, participants. And I hope, uh, I hope so that I deliver some kind of open research areas so you can work upon. And I really appreciate if you want to uh, uh, to collaborate with uh, with us as a research group or or maybe individual or maybe you in uh, in my university. Um, I, I like uh, I like to do something like that. So uh, need to know to say also this something that I said. This is open research areas. So uh, I'm really waiting for anyone want to uh, collaborate with us. And thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor uh, Hendrik and Aini and Santi for uh, inviting me for this. Uh, uh, really nice uh, lectures uh, and I'm so happy to be part with all of you um, and really uh, I want to say please take care of this, uh, from this coronavirus uh, we ask a lot to remove it uh, and, if, and the, at least we know the end of this coronavirus and uh, I want to say also uh, have a read because it's uh, maybe after tomorrow uh, we are going to be in the uh, Eid al-Adha so uh, have a eat and thanks so much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Professor. Maybe yeah. for a the questions that okay. still uh, unanswered, the the question the question will and the answer will upload it in our uh, Facebook group at Global Research Ecosystem Network. It will be there. 
the question and the answer. And for the last uh, section, maybe I will uh, maybe make some summarize, just a common summarize. Yeah, summarize. Okay. This yeah, this is our a uh, Facebook uh, group. So maybe for uh, do, who does uh, ask some questions, and we don't have any time to answer that questions. It will upload it in our uh, global in our in our a uh, Facebook uh, group. Uh, this is our uh, Facebook group, Global Research Ecosystem Network. Maybe you can uh, visit this uh, group. Okay, maybe I will make some uh, resume. Okay, this pandemic has attacked various, uh, many various uh, lines, many, many countries has uh, affected, but we as academics have very, uh, have many challenges to uh, overcome this situation with our uh, own uh, uh, specialty. Okay, in especially not in medicine, pharmacy, on other uh, re close related with this a uh, uh, virus, but also uh, we as a engineer also can contribute to overcome this situation. Maybe that's the resume uh, from for me. Okay. Okay, and then let's. I give this to back to MC, probably. Ms. Okay, Anna. thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ersan and uh, Prof. Elgar for um, insightful uh, session with the uh, today's our uh, online lecturing session. Uh, before we. Uh, and this session, I would like to uh, share the information from the Research Sinoga Foundation. This is our next webinar um, uh, organized by Research Sinoga Foundation and also Research Sinoga Institute and in collaboration with Tyler and Francis Group and F1000 Research, one of the best open um, a science a platform in the world because they are uh, in Scopus Q1 and we have the title how to publish open access with Tyler and Francis with the two speakers Demitra Elina uh, as the editorial community manager of F1000 research and also Victoria Babit the director of researcher development and outreach from uh, Tyler and Francis uh, please welcome to uh, all the participants to register to this webinar because this is free and if you uh, want to give donation for RSF social program for COVID-19 pandemic relief, you can also um, give the donation. The uh, information is on the poster. And also please register to this uh, link. You also can, uh, maybe uh, uh, our admin can share the link in the Zoom chat room. So all the participants can easily to click the link and also to register. Uh, this uh, is one of the best webinar will be organized by Research Sinaga Foundation. So um, this is the webinar. And then uh, one more thing that I want to share uh, with the participant is um, this one. This is uh, one of the best program also from uh, Research Sinaga Foundation because this um, program will provide a compre comprehensive um, uh, material, comprehensive workshop uh, for uh, seven basic skills for researcher consists of 10 sessions of uh, online uh, uh, workshop, uh, including involving the six uh, experts uh, from the uh, USA and also Malaysia and also uh, Indonesia and four of them as is uh, four of them are the editor of uh, Scopus uh, top tire journal so please don't miss it 
uh, to uh, join this program. Uh, the program consists of uh, 10 sessions. The total of the program is 30 hours. So uh, this is, uh, uh, will be the best uh, program also from uh, Research Senegal Foundation. So that's uh, the information that I want to share uh, to the participants uh, today. Again, I would like to say thank you to Prof. Elgar, to uh, Mr. Esan Musli, and also uh, for Dr. Hendrati and uh, Ms. Santi and all the team who organized this webinar. See you again uh, on the next webinar. Don't forget to uh, follow our Facebook, uh, Research Sinego Foundation, to get the updated uh, information uh, of the all uh, the activities of the Sustainable Foundation, and also the recorded version of this webinar will be uploaded in our YouTube. So please don't forget to follow, uh, subscribe, and like our YouTube channel, Research Sustainable Foundation. And also, if you uh, want to uh, uh, get the detailed information regarding the Research Sustainable Foundation, please visit our website, www.researchsynergy.org. Okay, thank you again for all the uh, person who in charge in this session. See you again on the next webinar. Thank you, Prof. Elgar. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you uh, thank Mr. You. Ersan. You're welcome. Thank yeah, you, Professor. Thank you. thank you to all the participants. So we will um, uh, end this meeting. And see you again on the next webinar. Insha'Allah. Okay, thank you so much. See you again. Thank you. So <laughs>